All right. I would like to thank uh, CBI for the opportunity to present. It's been a fantastic conference. I'm going to talk about how to build a research infrastructure for clinical trials in eight minutes. Let's see if how that goes. <laughs> I have no disclosures pertinent to this talk. So before we get to the infrastructure, I want to emphasize that there are three key elements that you should probably uh, try to obtain before you start doing any type of research. It's not that you won't be successful without these elements, it's just going to make your life a little bit easier. First thing is you're going to need a mentor, you're going to need opportunity, and you're going to need time. Let's talk about the first one. The first thing you want to find is a successful mentor, someone who's been successful at clinical research. Everybody famous that I've known, um, they had a really good mentor, for example. Sabatine had Eugene Brunwald. Deepak Bhatt had Eric Topol. Guy down here, Dr. Beckman had, uh, you know, Dr. Krieger, who, is, who can be a little curmudgeon -y, but he's awesome. And, uh, you know, the thing is they know how to do things right, and they will probably teach you how to do things right. And that's going to be key. But you also want to look for a mentor who has a long track record of getting their mentees in good places. It's not going to do any good to try to do research with somebody that cranks out 100 papers a year and is involved in 10 clinical trials a year, but they don't help develop anybody. So those are two things you want to keep in mind. Other things, it would help, it'd be helpful if you really know them well and you click with them, have similar academic interests, and have a good working relationship. The last two I don't think are deal breakers, but they will just make your life a lot easier. You're also going to need an opportunity. You need things like learn how to do abstracts, review articles, editorials, original articles, site-based research. These are all things that will be given to you, hopefully, by your mentor. The last thing you need is you're definitely going to need time. You're going to need protected research time. Why? You're going to need training. You're going to need to learn how to do things. You're going to need education. Most likely, if you don't know, I'm not saying you have to learn how to do your own stats, but you might want to take a class so you can communicate with your statistician so that they do exactly what you want them to do. And you're going to need time to work. All I can say <laughs> is IRBs and protocols do not write themselves. So now let's get on to the infrastructure in the last five minutes. These are the main components that I think that uh, are essential in order to do any type of clinical research wherever you are. And then I'll give you an example how I use them in my institution. You're going to need leadership, regulatory approval, contractual agreements, recruitment, quality control systems, data collection, management, and analysis, data standards, and communication of results. Leadership. Leadership will be probably yourself, your mentor, but also your institution, the operational side. You need to figure out what is going to be the focus of your research group. Are you going to do site-based research? Are you going to do in-house research? Or are you going to do grant-funded research units, things like that? You need to have somebody making sure the ship is going in the right direction. Next is regulatory. There's a lot of rules, and you need to find out who in your institution knows everything about them. You're going to need regulatory approvals like ethics, IRB forms. You're going to need compliance forms. If you want to do clinical trials, there's always amendments. You need to be able to know how to implement them. You also need to know what to do if you have serious adverse events. Next, let's talk about the F word, funding. Um, it's funny because the most famous people, the people that use the New England Journal as their scratch pad, you know, they all were funded at some point by industry and things like that. Now, it's a little scarcer. But there's funding out there. There's federal government, there's industry, medical devices, pharmaceuticals, biotech, nonprofit foundations, institutional support. What is key is you'll be able to get funding if you work hard at it. But piggyback your funding for other projects. Don't just fund one project. Be thinking about your next, your second, third, and fourth big project. That way you can use your initial funding to help start working towards your other projects and other goals. That way it makes it last longer. And your boss will like it. Financial management. You need to have somebody in your group that knows how to deal with the finances, the legal work, uh, contracts, grants, and sponsors. You need to be able to always know where the influx of money is going. Where is it coming in? Where is it going out to? You need to know what your short and long-term out costs will be. You need to know, you need to have this all in a nice ledger somewhere just in case you get audited also. 
you might not need to know the details of it, but you need to be able to have the 10,000 foot view and have somebody you can ask questions and they'll give you the right answers. One of the most important things I think will be your research team. This is your operational team, administration. All of us have day jobs. And if you wanna get, let's face it, if you wanna be a 90% researcher, you're gonna get paid like a 90% researcher. The thing is that you're gonna still be doing CAS, you're still gonna be doing interventions, and it's gonna be your MP that's gonna be doing the patient education, identifying your subjects, getting consent and follow up. Stats, stats is a big thing. Informatics, get to know who runs informatics at your institution. They're the ones that are gonna extract, clean the data and merge the data and do the data analysis. These are the two groups whenever I meet with my NP and my statistical support, I always bring them donuts and coffee. Because number one, I already know I'm gonna ask something of them and I want them to associate meeting with me with something happy. So I, these are the two groups that I do everything possible to making happy, including paying as much as possible from my, from my funds. So I'm gonna give you an example how I use, um, I'm at Duke and the Durham VA. My research is primarily based at the Durham VA. For example, there, every VA has a dedicated research office. So for them, whenever I have a question, I simply go to them and say, hey, I wanna do this type of trial. What are the forms? What are the regulations? What do I need to do? Now, when it comes time to talk to a sponsor, I don't do it. They're the ones that do it. They have a nonprofit subsidiary to handle financing. So I don't have to get my hands dirty at all. They're the ones that handle the contracts, where the money goes, who gets paid, when they get paid. I don't have to worry about it. IRB, unfortunately, the Office of Research and Development, it's a necessary evil. However, the VA has actually become pretty streamlined. They have both a local IRB and a central. So if I wanna do projects with, say, Dr. Banerjee, I can submit it through a central IRB and it already takes care of multiple sites. They also have monitoring pharmacy. It's easy, I can get records about what medication each patient is getting and they have the facilities. Next, there's a large, stable population. So all I have to do is ask the questions. I know the patients are there. The next thing that's gonna be really important that you should probably, it, even if you're not at the VA, is you really wanna focus on EHR systems. I think that is gonna be the future of doing clinical trials and doing research because it's coupled with a lot of secondary data. That's where my chief of informatics really comes in because I ask him the question, he gets me the data. Lastly, there's a clinical data warehouse that comes with every VA where I can store my information safely and I can extract it whenever I need to do any type of study that I want. So those are just examples of the previous points that I've told you how I use it in my institution. Thank you.